Hey, Sniggles back. Back, back again. Another video. What's going on? Different one tonight. Completely different from all the others we've done for quite a while, okay? This is G Parted Live DVD stroke ISO stroke USB stick. Okay. Do you know what it is? Well, if you do, you're the next guy. You can just sit back, put your feet up, have a drink, and watch me go through the video. If you don't know what G Parted is, you might want to look at this. So, G Part is a live ISO stroke DVD stroke CD, so you can do stuff to your hard drive. Now, you know when sometimes it goes a bit bang, or you want to repartition it, or you want more partitions on your drive, but you can't do it in the system you're in. You may even be in Windows, and you don't want to do it the Windows way. It's for everything, even Mac. Come on, you can do it. This is the thing for you, okay? It's just a tool. It's not a distro as such. It's a tool you keep in your tool bag, or your tool USB stick bag, or your CD bag, or whatever you take around with you to get you out of trouble, or just do stuff that you need to do. So anyway, <clears throat> we're in the box, of course, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it. But it's very, very minimal, and it's based on Debian 6.1 as far as I'm aware now. So it's now a Debian base, but it comes with the Fluxbox uh, interface. I'm just going to call it interface. It's getting late. <sighs> you know what it's like. For a few too many apple juices, as you do. Because it's half term. Mm. And that one is really apple -y. I think that's just ordinary apple juice, actually. So on your screen, all you get is exit, screenshot, terminal, G part of itself, screen resolution. You will need to use this on nearly everything. Okay, you may be lucky and it'll come up come up full screen for you, and a web browser, blah, 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 a web browser. But you will need to configure your network first. Now, because it's Fluxbox, it works a bit differently. Now, some of you may be alien to this, and some of you may think, "Ah, oh, I've been using Fluxbox for twenty years, etc." So first I'm going to configure my network so I can actually open the web browser. For a simple reason, there may be a problem when you're trying to do your disk and you don't know the, the answer to it. So you'll need a web browser for that, okay? And that's the reason why it's here. So if I double click my network config, use DHCP, yeah, that's fine by me. So I tab it, and OK it. It will do its stuff, press enter to continue. Now in theory, I should be now connected to the web. Don't quote me on that just yet. Okay. As you know, this is going to be a really short video. Hopefully. We open the web browser. It's NetSurf. My God in Himmel. <clears throat> I've not used NetSurf for a few years. Uh, if you're in the comments or you watch the video, please thumbs up if you say NetSurf and just put a thumbs up if you've ever used NetSurf. It's just a basic, basic web browser. Now, this is where the manual comes from. Okay. So, give it a good read if you don't know what you're doing. Because you could trash your system. And I'm I'm not... It's, it's your problem, not mine. So, read very, very carefully. If you're not happy doing it, don't do it. Get somebody else to do it for you. So, you can sue them later. Or whatever. Okay. But this tells you all about what you need to know. Which is quite good. It's the other stuff. Let's have a look. Um, no, I'm not going to do that. So we'll get rid of the web browser window. So we're all connected to the web. I don't really want to take a screenshot. But if you're doing some stuff for uh, work, or say a school, and you're having a problem and you want to send a screenshot to somebody with a problem where it is, this may be good for you. Terminal, of course, is the terminal. Do lots of terminal stuff. So we're going to open G parted, but it's already open. When you first boot the disk, it opens immediately, okay? Because that's what it's for. It's called G parted. It's for partitioning your disk. It's in the name G parted. We're partitioning, yeah, on a grand scale. So this little box here, I'm going to open, and as you can see, I've created a little eight gigabyte disk <clears throat> that is just totally blank. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what you're doing, here's, here's how we do stuff. Okay, so I'm going to click on there to make sure it's clicked, but it's full blue, so we know it's activated. Ready device, we want to create a partition table. 
Now here you get a choice. MS-DOS, Amiga, BSD, GPT, Mac, PC-98. Some of these are really, really old school. The loop you would use for live CDs or a, a live system, I imagine. But we're just going to go with the basic MS-DOS, okay? Obviously, if you want to do it for a BSD system, you'd use BSD. So we're going to do MS-DOS. We're going to apply that. And that should now be done. So that's fantastic. So I want to partition my disk. I want a disk with um, two partitions. I want a main system. And then I want some swap. So say I'm doing it from a really old system. I'm just, this is out of my head now. So we click on New. Now it shows me the whole disk, basically. Now it creates a primary partition or an extended partition at the moment. Okay, And you can give it a name if you want to. Now your file system is all depending on what uh, operating system you're using. So if I open it up for you, there's ButterFS, XFAT, XT2, X3, X4, F2FS, which is for normally a flash drives, FAT16, FAT32. These are also used for flash drives that you're doing stuff, say with photography or video stuff. HFS, I think we've got this for. Then it's swap, I'll come to that in a minute. Then we get the other stuff like Minx, NFLs, NFTF or NTFS, that's the Windows system stuff. Riser, UDF, XFS, and cleared, or you can unformat it. It's entirely up to you. But I'm going to leave it as the XT4. But what I'm going to do, just to make this video slightly longer, is I'm going to chug back on the main drive. So I've got uh, around about a gig of unallocated space. So I'm allocating 700, sorry, 7,160 megabytes of stuff. So I'm going to add that. Fantastic. But that leaves me a gig of unallocated space. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click that and click on new again. But this time I'm going to allocate it as swap or Linux swap. If you're using a Linux system, I'm on a Linux channel, so I'm going to do that, aren't I? Okay. That's fine. We're all done. <clears throat> As you can tell, allergies are really kicking in. Hopefully the rain will kick it away for a couple of days. So what I'm going to do now is actually click on the arrow. And it says, do you really want to do that? Bearing in mind, if you're doing this on your own disk, you could wipe your whole system. Okay. Just bear that in mind. I have done it once in 20 years. Because um, I made a mistake and you just wipe your system. So be really, really careful when you're using Gparted. It's a very, very powerful piece of software. It will just, you, you won't be able to recover. That's it. Unless you want to spend a lot of money. So I'm going to apply for that. I'm going to apply. It's going to do its stuff. It's done it already. Okay. So we'll close. It'll do its stuff. So I have a, a main drive of just under 7 gig. I have a swap file. It's not a swap file, it's a swap partition. As you know, most modern Linux systems use a swap file now. I'm not sure what I prefer, to be honest with you, but hey, hey ho, sort of you in cave, you know what it is. <clears throat> now, one other thing you might want to do, say you're installing a uh, puppy distro or a, a more bare bone system, you might want to highlight and say here and manage your flags. You might also want that to be a boot, so you can do boot from that drive. Okay. So that is now a bootable drive. On other systems, especially if you're going to the really obscure systems, you might want another partition above that one just to be a boot system. Okay, so you'll have three partitions. But that's basically how it works. Gparted Live is just a really, really simple system. But be really, really careful of what you're doing when you're using it. But most of you should not use it. I just want to give you a look. This is the beta version, by the way, of the latest one. I just want to have a look and see if it's any good. And yet, yeah, it still does what it says on the tin. Sneaky Linux out. I'll see you later. Bye bye.